All right. Hey, everybody. It's great to be back. Today, we have a, an amazing special. Today, we are going to talk to some of the people that are in the documentary Phosphate. And Phosphate is about phosphate mining and the effects that it has on the environment and the people that live around it or directly are affected by it. But you got to remember that the water is all connected. So everyone is affected by it. And the problem is not just this one company in this one town, in this one state. The problem is business as usual, the way companies do business. And today to talk about that with me, we have Jeremy Block and Stell Bailey, both from the documentary, both uh, amazing water activists and two people that have just put their hearts and souls into making a change for the future. And it, it was an amazing honor to get to know them while making the movie. You know, uh, I, I'm sure a lot of you already know, but you know, I, I've been battling cancer since 2005 and without any clear cut answers on what kind of cancer it is, I find myself in this weird hybrid where I have an environmental cancer. So, you know, this is a very important topic to me. Um, I started traveling, working in conservation, but then I realized that, you know, I wanted to really make a difference in my own backyard. And then I went to Florida and I met these incredible people who have changed the entire course of the way that I can perform activism as well. So today we're gonna to do something a little different. We're just gonna put up the uh, the sign there real quick. Um, <clears throat> that's it, <laughs> we're not doing anything fancy today because I wanna get everybody on because uh, it's an important that we have everybody today together. So here we go, we're gonna bring in Stell. Hey Stell. Hi, how are you all doing today? <laughs> Thank you for being back here and joining us. And uh, I'm really excited that the documentary is coming out and that we can actually start talking about the way that the environment affects our body. You know, people tend to forget that we have this connection between our environment and our health. And um, I would like to talk to you about that. Um, you know, if, if you can let me know sort of, you know, I mean, we, we do tell your story in the movie, but let everybody know a little bit about what brought you here and how you think we can make a good positive solution change in the future. Well, I mean, of course, the movie is about phosphate mining and, um, you know, my story and, and my personal impact happened on the east coast of Florida, um, where my family got cancer in the same year. And I kind of break that down and give you more detail in the documentary. So if you watch the documentary, you'll be able to get more detail of my personal impact and what happened to my family. A lot of you already know what happened, but... Um, I think, you know, I'm very grateful that I was asked to talk in this documentary about the health connection to uh, our environmental exposures. I don't think a lot of people really think about how our water quality and these polluters are affecting our personal health. And it's something that I started to see unfold across the state when I began to collect cancer data and autoimmune diseases um, for my personal work because I wanted to understand more how my family got cancer and we learned that there were cancer causing chemicals in our drinking water, in our groundwater. And the more you dive deep into the environment in Florida, you realize that it's really sensitive and it's easily contaminated. And I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. And so this movie really, really highlights how the phosphate mining industry is not only detrimental to the environment, but it's also affecting human health, obviously wildlife. If we see manatees dying and massive loads of fish dying, don't doubt for a minute that it's affecting human health as well. So our ecosystem is connected to us. And so we really got to start taking care of our earth and our, our own well-beings and our neighbors and our families and our communities. And one way to doing that is by exactly what you did, Eric. You, you did this documentary. You showed exactly how detrimental phosphate mining is to our environment and how it is affecting, uh, personally affecting people that were in the documentary. And I'm just really excited for people to see some of the stories you had found uh, two workers, one who uh, won a lawsuit and another one who um, still worked there that spoke up. And I think that's really important. The more people that speak up, the more people that document, the more awareness that we're going to bring and, and that'll bring action. I, I you know, I, I agree 100% and I'm very excited because that that's the model that you used to affect change. You know, you started collecting people's information that they were submitting 
you know, to you about their illnesses, information that the state wouldn't take and other people wouldn't take. And by doing that, uh, and if, if everybody hasn't already been there, go to fight40.org and you will see a map where there are cancer clusters and other situations throughout Florida. And Stella has created this organization with a few other activists in order to map out and give us a voice. And that is something that's so important because the only voice we have is the American Cancer Society, and they don't really speak very often for us or to us. Um, so, you know, we don't have a place. We don't have a, a seat at the table generally for these types of issues. It's either science or politics. And human toll and the human cost is really important. And, you know, to me, that's what was so amazing about meeting everybody, you know, was to see how everybody that we got to talk to has taken this terrible experience and decided that they want the next generation to not have to have the same battle. And I think that that really is what inspired me there. You know, I always say Florida has a lot of some of the worst water issues for sure, but also some of the best activists and the most amount of activists and activism I've ever seen in the world. And Florida definitely gets that you know, um, because it's incredible. You know, Los Angeles, we see very little activism. Around the world in general, there's very little activism. People accept that this is just what it is. And I love that you guys have said, this is not what it is. This is not what we can allow it to be. And this is what, we, we're not settling on this. And uh, I think it's important to speak up and shake things up a bit. <laughs> I agree, it's not, I, I say it's not normal. We've normalized the amount of cancer we're seeing um, unfold across the state and just debilitating diseases. And once you are given that diagnosis, as you know, Eric, it's a lifelong diagnosis. It doesn't matter if you're told you're in remission, you have a high chance, high risk um, of secondary cancers. You have autoimmune issues. You have issues from treatments. I had one of the most toxic chemicals put into my body called chemotherapy, but it's, it's known as one of the most toxic. And so now I have side effects from that a lifelong sentence is what I call it. And, and we get the aftermath. So it is really affecting lives. And I think we need to recognize and acknowledge that here in Florida. Well, I'm really, I'm excited for people to go watch this movie, hear more about your story, especially. And, you know, if you go to the website, phosphatemovie.com, we've also been working with Stell and some other activists to put together a, a list of resources that'll show you how you can help the battle in Florida how you can test your own water, how you can find out what's in your water with ewg.org's amazing testing also, um, and to, to give people a handle to reclaim what should be theirs, which is the right to clean water. Um, and so, you know, normally we have we have two of us here, but I wanted to bring uh, Jeremy on as well today. So we got everybody there. Jeremy, can you... Um, can't, oh, Jeremy's muted himself. <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah, well, uh, Jeremy, can you, he might be frozen. Okay. There he is. <laughs> I can't hear you, man. Hey, you got to unmute. How's that? Hey, there how's you that? are. Yeah, all right. Here we minute, go. Uh, for all this to load. How you doing? Good. Well, Thanks for joining doing, us, Eric? even though you're out in the field. Yeah, no, it's all good. Um, uh, Frank, man, I'd like to say uh, thank you. I appreciate it because if it wasn't for you, Eric, uh, you know, a lot of this would be definitely uh, a, a lot harder than uh, than it is. And, mm. and Stel, you two over there on the East Coast are doing some great work. Um, for those who don't know me, you know, I'm Jeremy Block. Um, when Eric was down here, you know, I was kind of helping him around and showing him, you know, a couple uh, couple decent locations. And um, I started in this this whole fight when uh, back in 2018 Mosaic uh, put out some some rezoning plan to actually and I'm here now so I can tell you. Uh, I think it's about about 300 feet that way they wanted to do the railroad about 500 feet that way they wanted to do the, uh, the, the start the, the phosphate mine so I'm literally like right up uh, right up against it and, uh, you know, after doing a whole bunch of research and, and, and how, you know, the cons way outweigh the pros, um, it, it just wasn't, you know, worth it to, to have something like that out, out here in this, you know, pretty countryside world. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, 
you know, all the all the dust and all the, the, the cancer causing shit, garbage, sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't want that in my backyard, you know, so. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it, it was, it's amazing to see. And Karen, tell us about Nosaic also, because I think your group is is awesome. And you guys have done a lot to battle Mosaic already. Like people will watch this movie, but they have to understand that still you, everybody in this movie has been fighting this battle for a long time. I just, I'm here at the tail end. I just got to capture all these incredible activists that are already in motion. Um, you know, so I, you guys have been doing a lot more b before I got there, and I kind of wanted you to talk a little bit about Nosaic's victories. Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, we, we thankfully, you know, we've uh, we've been able to to, uh, to hold them off in, in the uh, the county commissioner meetings, and you know, after after sitting there for uh, well, well over seventeen hours worth of. Uh, uh, testimonies mm -hmm. from all the um, all the, the, the a lot of residents and and even surrounding counties uh, residents you know came out and, and you know voiced their opinion too about how you know the the runoff and everything I mean everything runs south and and so you know if, if they were on here it would make it that much worse for you know Charlotte County and Toyota County um, where there's there's no phosphate mining there right now anyway you know and and uh, for the runoff into the port and, and, and cause all these fish kills and everything, and, you know, uh, I think I think you know, unfortunately, the the, the worst of everything was uh, you know, up the Willows area with uh, Mulberry when that went and uh, that, that sinkhole over there in Lake Wales, mm. you know, that that hurt a lot, you know, more than just the, the people around there too, you know. It's, it was a lot of the wildlife, a lot of the fish, and everything. Um, so from you know starting that group, Nose I was able to kind of you know put the word out a little bit, and then from there you know just expand and kind of let people know what's going on in this town. Because I'm gonna say you know 90%, I'll say 90% of the uh, the the overall uh, population that has no idea what phosphate even is, let alone what phosphate mining entails. You know, so doing all the research I can, you know, I'm putting it out there for everybody else to be. Yeah. Now, that that's a question really for, for both of you also. You know, it seemed to me when I was there that Mosaic works really hard at hiding what they're doing. And I think a lot of the bad polluters they kind of have that habit. Um, did you find that people were were difficult to, to convince that, you know, to educate the, of what was happening or were people shocked find, once you started to let people know the, the results that you were finding? And so you can, you can start if you want. Uh, well, um, you know, when, when we talk to any community about environmental issues, um, it's an educational process, but, you know, I think we need to have a lot more faith in our communities because really knowledge is power. And once you begin to educate them, I think they start to understand and they begin to ask questions and they do get concerned and they'll say, well, how do you know this is in your water? And, and you know, they, they get very involved with it. I mean, in my personal case, I went door to door. That's what activism is about. You, you're on the ground, grassroots boots on the ground, right, you know, with your community, standing beside your community um, and just trying to educate and bring that awareness. And I think you, you do have some pushback and difficulty, especially in the beginning. Of course, people are going to be skeptical and wonder, well, what, what is this all about? Um, you know, sometimes people fear what they don't know. And so <laughs> you do get some of that. And I think my biggest pushback is maybe people that are affiliated with with the polluter, whether they work for them, um, because they're scared to lose their job. It's not necessarily something um, that they're doing to personally attack you. It's because that's their livelihood. And so that's understandable. But I think we found more issues with people that worked within the city government that were friends with leadership that that just felt personally attacked because it was their job place. And they didn't understand um, where we were coming from. But after many, many conversations, we did get them on board with that. And I think what Jeremy has done, he he got them before they got in. And usually when you see Tiny Point, right? 
it's too late by the time people get in an uproar and want to hold signs and start getting involved. And he said, we're going to make sure people know before we get to that point, before we get to the point that this water is going to be messed up in my home and in my community, I'm going to make sure people are aware. And you did a brilliant job and more people need to be doing that. Exactly that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, a lot of people that, that I try and, uh, you know, at, at least inform, you know, for the most part, um, I mean, they, a lot of what other people say and, 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 you know, every, everything's all about opinion. So what I've realized is, you know, most people will take what other people said against them. You know, they, they don't, they, uh, and it's really sad to say this, but a lot of people, they just really don't care. You know, they don't care enough. Let me, let me rephrase that. Um, you know, I, I mean, let's start with, okay, if I were to go up to Hardy County right now, anywhere in Hardy County, and I go and I hold up a sign that says Mosaic sucks or something like that, you know, I'm going to get more hassled up there from the Mosaic employees or families of mosaic employees because they're like hey what are you doing you're causing trouble you know that's that's my, my husband's job or that's my family's job you know you're messing with our livelihood yeah well you're messing with my water you know so uh as far as like you know like the the, the people that are out there and and taking advantage of say you know mosaic uh career opportunities uh you know that's they they always portray themselves to be this good steward of the land and, and everything and, and they go up and beyond and, and they donate to the elementary schools. And, you know, I mean, all it is is you're, you're just like, uh, you're, you're putting on the cake before you bite into it. That's all it is. You know, I mean, you, you may you dress it up and make it look all pretty, but at the end of the day, what are you going to leave us with? You know? And I mean, I'm literally like, I'm sitting right in front of my property. You know, I, don't this only way. I got my horses out here. You know, and, I, you know, if, if I don't have this, I don't, you know, I don't have anything. I moved away from Florida, down in the city, to get away from all that, that garbage and pollution and old people and, and too overpopulated to come out here and live out in the middle of nowhere. You know, I like it out here. You know, so, but, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, and then I, I speak to people locally and, and, you know, they kind of understand a little bit more like, okay, they would much rather put their health before money rather than, you know, like people who work in the mines or anything or something, you know, I mean, they're, they're like, oh, money, money, money. That's all it is. That's all it, it's about. And, you know, not to interrupt, but it's an interesting point to bring up because <clears throat> these guys that have the jobs, like down there, we learned that Mosaic only hires maybe three or 400 people, but they have thousands of subcontractors. <clears throat> so when they get sick, they, Mosaic doesn't have to pay the, the medical bill, you know, and, and like Alan talks about in the movie, you know, the guys have these dosimeters, which for people that don't know that that shows how much radiation you're absorbing to a radiation exposure. So the guys that go in the mines have to wear dosimeters because when it gets to a critical number. And so Alan was saying they, they would put them under their hats so that they wouldn't get the direct um, exposure and then they could stay in the mines and work longer. So it's, it's unfortunate that people have to make that choice. You know, like Gary Pittman talks about, either they can feed his family or he can give up his own health. And that is unacceptable. You know, that, that should not be where people have to be and, and have to feel stuck like that. So it is important that we point out that Mosaic, although they claim to be one of the biggest employers, they're one of the biggest contractors, <laughs> subcontractors. So they don't, you know, they don't really stay and, and help people. Um, and, you know, everybody always says, well, they're such a giant. What are you guys going to do? But, you know, they do have one Achilles heel and Stell and, and Jeremy have both pointed it out, which is permits. You know, you might not be able to stop them from doing what they're doing, but you can stop their permitting process. So as a sort of a, 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 a tip for any local activist, this is where you can go in and chop down this giant company against you. So I'd like for both of you guys to just talk a little bit about that process and why it's important to be part of the process and to be part of that decision-making. If you want to start us off still. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I first want to start off, and I'm not sure if a lot of people that are on here with us 
understand that in the state of Florida, they permit polluters to pollute. And I know that sounds absolutely insane, but when you see something like Piney Point happen and you're not asking yourself why they were allowed to do that, that's a comment that I constantly see across the internet is like, how are they allowed to do that? How can they get away with that? How do they do that without um, any repercussions? Because they're permitted to do it. The state said, go ahead and do it. This was the best option for you to get rid of your waste. And so we're just going to have you dump it. And so it's really, really important that we get involved in a sense that um, on, on, a, on a, a government level, uh, getting involved civically. I call it civic engagement. I know it's so difficult, but if you follow people like Jeremy, who has Nosaic, um, it makes it so much easier. You have activists and advocates out there that are trying to put out the information to let you know what is happening in your own backyard. And if you just stand beside them and you work with the advocates and the activists to make your home a better place to go down and help stop the permitting prop process and and you can see all of that, how to do it usually on our pages. We have groups, we have websites, we have places where we're trying to put out the information and we'll say, this is how exactly what we need to do. We need to go to city council meeting. And it, it really is about numbers. We've had so many commissioners tell us, um, oh, only three of you showed up. It, does, it doesn't look like enough people care. Only two of you showed up. Where's the rest? It, it, you know, so it matters if you show up. So make sure you're showing up to the important uh, meetings. And I'm sure Jeremy could get more into the nitty gritty of, of how he stopped the permit right there on in his hometown. If he's still and on. You know what? We just lost him. <laughs> but yes, no, you're, but you're, you're absolutely right. You know, a lot of people think, oh, it's just a meeting or whatever. It's the opportunity. And I remember you saying this, I think on a previous podcast, and it always stuck in my mind that you have the opportunity to go on public record. Yep that you are now part of the public record and your opinion, your thoughts, what's important to you is now in the public record. And that is kind of like breaking through this wall that they have built. Because, you know, the, the sad thing is a lot of it does have to do with the cancer of the body politic where, you know, they've built this entire system to keep people out of it, but make them feel like they should be involved. But, you know, keep them away, make it confusing, make it complicated, um, you know, make it uh, at, when they're working. I and mean, how many of these meetings happen when people are in the middle of their day, they can't leave their job to go do it, you know. And so no matter how hard they try, people like you and Jeremy keep them in check. And, and you always make sure that your opinion is being heard. And that is what's really important it, because I did notice down there that they – they like to try to ignore it the best they can, but you guys won't let them. And I think that to me, that is really the beauty of, of uh, what we've got. Oh, I see Jeremy's back here. Um, talking about um, the permitting process and uh, yeah, how you guys, um, you know, why, why is it important for people to go to these meetings and what, what's important about being there? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. My phone overheated. It's a temperature too hot. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, I'm saying, I got to sit in front of the event right now. Um, yeah, so, uh, so, so the, the whole permitting process, I mean, there's actually like a, a whole like a, like a step of processes that, that the company has to go through if they're going to submit any type of uh, master mining permits or even, uh, uh, you know, they, they got to go through a bunch of stuff with the state, with the DEP and EA. You know, I mean, uh, we, we already know how, you know, they're already in the pockets and, and everything in Mosaic. But, you know, we're, we won't go there. But uh, so if you can, you know, kind of like cut them up with the knees before they even get there to the, uh, to the, to the, uh, like the planning and zoning meeting, right? So, so the first thing that the planning and zoning meeting has to do is, Pretty much all they're responsible for is just to make sure that all the documents, uh, T's and I's are crossed and dotted, you know, and, and that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, they really don't have the say so on what uh, what can pretty much go before the, the county commissioners or not. The only thing is, like, they have to go through, I believe, every single piece of paper and make sure that everything is legit and and any any person could go in there and and check these documents because it's all public knowledge so 
let's say uh, Mosaic wanted to mine 14,054 plus or minus one or two acres, you know, it, realistically, like in all actuality, we could go in there, well, what is it? 14,054 plus or minus, you know, like, what is it? Okay, let's get the documents straight first. You know, if you're going to mine, I, I want to know the, the, the acreage down to the foot, that down to the inch, down to the centimeter. And, you know, yeah, that, that would definitely be one way to, like, ridiculously stall them, you know, is just basically all, uh, you know, the, the paperwork and documents and, and, and stuff like that. But, you know, a, a lot of people, one, they won't go through that process, or two, they don't know uh, how to, or, or three, they don't even know, you know, what the actual dimensions are. And, uh, and then, you know, they, they might have some sort of um, uh, bias either toward or against the, the company. And so they can kind of make it a little bit easier or harder on them to get in front of the county commissioners. But once it's past the planning and zoning commission, it's ultimately down to, to the county commissioners. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, thankfully, yeah, you know, we, we have some county commissioners here that they're, they're not taking any of their BS. You know, they, they see what happened, you know, and, and Although, you know, we, we uh, Carrie, Molly, and I, we went to uh, a, a little meeting the other day. It was a, a, a political meeting. I'm not a, po a politician, but they were there and they were doing, Mosaic was there and they were doing a, a little presentation. And, and you know, a, a bunch of people were, were calling them out on, on their, their garbage. And, uh, and they were, you know, they, they, sometimes they just didn't have the answers to it oh well you know we got to confer with someone else or someone else and so they always kind of point the finger at someone else to say oh well you know you got to get those those questions over here so you know even even if it does go through the commissioner's uh process and these workshops they do the same thing you know they they keep pointing fingers at someone else and and i'm sure if you've seen any of the log feeds i mean you see uh there so or langford they'll say hey uh, i think this question is for you right and, and so that person will come up and they'll answer a question and then well the next question that probably seems like pretty close to that same question will be directed towards someone else you know because they're just trying to pass it off to, to <laughs> someone else that might you might know or might have a little bit extra time to think on how to answer that question before you know they can they can spit something out but you know as far as the permitting process goes you know if, if again if we could cut them off before they even get here. I think that right there is, is a win. Jeremy, do you know when the next one is in Arcadia or in DeSoto? Uh, the next meeting that people could go to and sh show uh, show up there and so uh, some pressure. Every everything is up on the uh, on the county website. It's DeSotoBOCC.com. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have it all memorized. Um, okay, yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. So, sometimes I do, though, because I, I remember the, the last workshop that was supposed to be, but I don't even think that they've announced the next workshop yet. I'm, I, hmm. You know, someone could correct me if I'm wrong but and post it up in, in the group. Um, but, you know, everybody who's, who's watching this right now, they're, they're more than welcome to, to, you know, hop on and join the, the hashtag Nosaic group. We put everything up on there. You know, even even if you even if you're not in DeSoto County, if you're in surrounding counties, even if you're not in surrounding counties, and you kind of you know interested to see how this turns out, you know, definitely you're more than welcome to, to join the group and, and and stay up to date. And you know, we always put information in there on on when the next workshop is or the, or the next uh, county commissioner meeting. I do know that there is a county commissioner meeting here at three o'clock today. Um, and I, I don't think it's, uh, Mosaic or anything is. is to that nature is on the agenda but i do like to go just in case you know they like to sneak something in there uh you know when when people aren't paying attention like an addendum to the to a, a permit or something like that you know well that's you know that's great definitely keep us updated um you know and we'll we'll do our best on on the phosphate movie.com page we also have letters that people can send to the county commissioners so yeah, look at that. <laughs> nice. I, I don't have mine yet. So <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> hey, look at that. <laughs> Those look great. <laughs> everybody, everybody, yeah, everybody but the editor has theirs. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> but no, I can't wait to see it actually color corrected and what the studio did. Uh, yeah, you know it's exciting because 
when I got down there, it was just like a lot of intimidation from Mosaic to a lot of the activists down there. It was a lot of people that felt like they were not being heard. And, you know, it was really incredible. I mean, it took a long time to be able to talk to everybody. You know, there's a lot of an unjustifiable suspicion um, from the activists down there. And they have to be careful who they're able to work with. So, you know, I was down there for two months before I could even talk to anybody. So um, I was just down there trying to get people to know me and, and you know, to, to, to be allowed in. And then luckily, um, you know, I was. And so, yeah, it, it's but what I learned down there was unreal. <laughs> you know, I mean, people will see it in the movie too, but it's just, it's absolutely shocking on so many levels. And you guys have so many battles that you're battling all at once, um, you know, because there's, they work really hard to keep the health effects away from their activities. Um, and that's something I just, um, we're gonna have to wrap up here pretty soon, but that is one thing I wanted to ask you guys about, um, you know, how does that happen? Like what, what, what should people be on the alert for or, or how are they being affected by these, um, by these activities of dumping back into the water supplies? Mm -hmm. um, human health wise, <laughs> I can speak on that. Um, yes, please. If you're, if you're drinking any kind of contaminated water or being exposed to contaminated groundwater, uh, the first thing that I would look out for is immune suppression. A lot of these chemicals cause immune suppression. So um, you could be dealing with autoimmune diseases, thyroid disease, uh, all of that before even cancer becomes a question. And so if you are dealing with getting sick all of the time, you have lymph nodes coming out on your neck constantly or in your armpit, um, you know, any signs of, 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 of any kind of inflammation that you were constantly getting in your body, you, you could potentially be exposed to something environmental. So, you know, I just keep an eye out on that. As far as the, the cancer stuff, I, I think the number one thing is, and I think it's on your website, is if you really want to know if you're being exposed, you have to test your water. You have to test to see what is in your water and then go from there and figure out what those chemicals are, why they're high in your water, and there's so much that goes into testing, but um, there's information on the phosphatemovie.com site to go over that as well. But Jeremy, what do you think? You're you're out there with radiation, so I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's more than just drinking water. You're dealing with air at this point, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, it's 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 real bad. Uh, you know, I mean, just pretty much the, the stuff coming from from up north a little bit. But you know, uh, you know, like you were talking about with the lymph nodes and stuff. You know, my my mother, she she has you know swollen lymph nodes all the time, and and she she went she got in the pool the other day. It was uh, it was you know shortly after this whole tiny point incident, but you know she went in the pool, and then uh, the pool guy came out and and tested the pool because she she ended up going to the hospital for something, um, and it turns out that she you know she has a stage stage three kidney disease or something like that, and uh, when they tested the the pool, it was uh, it was. The, the water was really high in, in, in uh, phosphate. And so, I mean, the only place that that could come from, because, you know, my dad filled up the pool, like, you know, like uh, refilled it uh, a couple days prior. The only place that could have really come from, you know, that concentrated anyway is from the ground, you know. So uh, there, there's definitely some sort of uh, groundwater contaminants around here. Um, and I'll tell you, every single, every single dog that I've had uh, – living over here um they've all grown tumors you know just tumors on their bellies or you know on their back or, or something just but i don't i don't know what kind of tumors uh, uh well the last one was a uh uh, uh well man what was it uh mast cell tumor i don't even know what causes that but unfortunately that's it, it, it killed my dog you know and and um mm. thankfully i don't drink the water i you know uh, use uh, bottled water, but the only thing I use the water here for is to bathe in. And, and honestly, even that, when I get out of the shower, every single time I get out of the shower, you know, I'll have a couple little like red, red rashes on it. You know, mm -hmm. just a couple of them. And uh, I don't know if it's just if it's. So it's I mean, it's got to be something in the water. There, there's no other explanation uh, uh, for that. So, you know, as, as far as the, the, the water quality and all that, I mean, it could be better. It, it could be better, but I mean, a lot of the damage is done. I mean, it, it, it's going to be really hard to undo all that, you know. 
Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I think, you know, really the best we can hope for is to force more transparency, to force them to allow us to be involved in this process somehow. Like, it, that's the other crazy thing is that they do the water tests, they report themselves to the to the community, uh, you know, to the, the overseers. And, and those, as we talk about a little bit um, in the movie, there's some other surprises in there, but the lawyers for Mosaic tend to have this revolving door. And then when they're done with that, they go to the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Now, not saying that the Florida Department of Environmental Protection cannot change things as they are, but it's probably more complicated for them because their job is to try to keep everybody healthy and to try to keep business running. So it's a very complicated topic, um, you know, and we're really hoping also that people that are involved in the phosphate side will get involved in this conversation with us. Um, because I think that that's the only way that we're gonna get things done is if, if they can listen to us. Um, but, and you guys have forced them too, so I love that. <laughs> Yeah, and that, that's what we need. We need more. I mean, if they're not going to voluntarily listen, we need to make sure that they are aware. And both of you have been able to affect political change, which has affected how people can live and, and, and the health and the quality of life people have. So I think it's really important that we learn from you guys, from your activism, from the approach that you take, and, and to learn, you know, we, it's it's got to be more than like, you know, just protests and pickets. It's got to be bridges and conversations and facts and information and debates. And there needs to be a lot of growth uh, in order for the two sides to come up with one solution, which I think is very possible. And Stella, you've shown it's possible. Jeremy, you've shown it's possible. So I think, you know, that's something we can all take away um, from the movie is that change is possible. One person can make a difference. And yeah, you guys have been incredible to, to see what you've already done. And I'm excited to see what else you're about to do, so. <laughs> well, I wanna say the same for you, Eric. I mean, you're going through cancer and you're doing this documentary and you're doing other documentaries. And, you know, I always talk about how documentary brings so much awareness to these issues. And it's a really big key factor in how, how we do our work. You know, if it wasn't for media or documentaries or movies or these, um, avenues of bringing awareness and education, we wouldn't be able to do the work that we do either. So, you know, you're a rock star, you're fighting cancer, you're, you're, you're doing this, you're fighting that. So I think there's just so many amazing people in this world. And like you said, we can all make a difference. All of us have that ability. We just have to tap into it. Yeah, ex exactly. We all play our part. You know, we, we come from the same heart and then we all have a different way that we, we can help push it. So, yeah, and it, and it is an honor to be able to work with everybody. So, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely hey, I, I, I definitely I definitely appreciate you coming out here and, and, and helping us too. You know, I mean, I, I can only imagine mm. what you're going through, man. I, honestly, I can do what you're doing. Like, <laughs> not 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 dealing with all that and being getting sick all the time. And uh, I mean, you're 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 strong, man. I appreciate everything you're doing to help us as well. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. For, you know, for me, it just reinforces why this movie has to be shown that it's more than a movie. It's a movement. You know, this is about changing our access and our ability to just have the right to not get environmental cancers <laughs> that can be prevented. I mean, it's as easy as them turning off a tap. So, you know, we're, we're going to hold them to it. And this is our, you know, we're definitely going to come out and, and do everything we can to try to try to fight back and yeah, be part, be part of this big movement. Like I said, you guys have already done so much before I got there. So it's awesome. Well, thank you guys for being on today and taking the time to talk to everybody. And uh, I'm excited. Is there anything else uh, you guys wanted to say before we wrap up today? Yeah. Tell people where they can pick this up at. There you go. Yes. You can get it on phosphatemovie.com. You can get it at walmart.com and barnesandnoble.com. Uh, and a few other, but I'm going to have to, I'll put some links up later <laughs> once I find out. I think we're in a few more places than that. So, yeah. So everybody, please go out, check the movie out. Um, you're going to hear their stories in full, which is incredible. And you're also going to show that what we're saying, what this movie is about, deserves 
a, a, um, a place in the conversation. This topic deserves to be talked about on an international and a national level, as well as a local level. So, you know, please help us push this message forward and, and help the people of Florida, help the people in your neighborhood, because everyone has water quality issues, whether you know it or not. So a uh, good place to start is to watch the movie, start considering what other people have been through, and then think about your own particular water supplies. So. All right. Well, thanks, guys. I can't wait. We'll do some more lives and uh, talk to everybody. And uh, I'll be seeing you guys in a few weeks. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks again. Bye. 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 All right. Well, there we have it. Um, that was Stell and that was Jeremy, two incredible water activists. I see a bunch of others here on the uh, the show. I see Coralie and Camilla and Sherry, who's done a lot uh, down there. I see Vegan of Love, who always is promoting very positive solutions to worldwide problems that we all face today. And so <clears throat> before we close off, again, I just want to say this documentary is, I mean, you all will follow the stories that I was able to, to learn about and follow. And I think you'll be just as shocked at what I found out. And it's such a personal thing. You know, people, children should not be getting cancers that we can prevent. We're not asking a lot from Mosaic, but we are asking that the people that we have to live around stop polluting us, stop putting their toxins in the water, stop putting their heavy metals in the water, stop adding cyanobacteria to the water. There's many, many things. There's fluoride, which you can go to fightforzero.org and learn all about fluoride. It's incredible. Um, that is an amazing resource, and Stella has been doing a bunch of fluoride testing. And fluoride, as you will learn in the movie, <clears throat> is basically the toxic runoff from the mining process. Now, the EPA says you're not even allowed to get rid of hydrofluorosilicic acid. So instead of putting it in a dumpster or putting it underground or putting it in a gyp stack, they put it in our water. And I'm not even exaggerating. That's in... You can learn more about that in the movie. You can learn more about that from Stell's website, fightforzero.org. Um, and, you know, the other problem is that Mosaic is allowed to come back into DeSoto in 2023, in January 2023, and vote again on their permits. Basically, Jeremy's group led the commissioners to having a doubt, and then they said no against Mosaic. And Mosaic said, okay, we're going to sue you for an outrageous amount of money. I think it was over $600 million. So then the county said, well, we don't have $600 million, so uh, how about we arbitrate? And then now there's an arbitrator in there. And the deal that Mosaic ended up striking was, this was in 2019, I believe, and Jeremy, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, or Paula, um, let me know if I'm wrong. But what they said was, we're going to give you a few years to do workshops. And then instead of us getting multiple permits to mine, we're going to come back in January 2023, and you're going to vote on all of our permits at once, which means it's a double jeopardy for the people that live there and for Mosaic. And as you'll see in the movie, Mosaic already has a office set up in DeSoto, even though there's no mining there. They've already built that. They've already bought a bunch of community goodwill, we shall say, by donating tons of money into Arcadia and into DeSoto County. And the people there are not fools. They know what's going on. They're fighting it wholeheartedly. I mean, and it's the majority of the people. It's not like it's some minority of the people, you know, five people out of the town that are upset with this. It's the majority of the people because they have seen their friends get sick. They have seen their neighbors get sick. They've seen their relatives get sick in surrounding counties. They all know each other and, and they talk and that's why I say there's an amazing spirit of unity that I, you know, really was beautiful and inspiring. And I can't wait for you to watch the movie and check it out as well. So thank you for joining today. Today was a very special episode. Um, you know, again, Mosaic is taking 70 million gallons of water a day, processing it through their plants and returning it to the river filled with toxins, heavy metals and cancer causing chemicals. And then what they not polluting there they're selling as fluoride, hydrofluorosilicic acid, and polluting in the other way. So we're getting hit from both sides, and every community in America faces this. So remember, this is a story, 
but it's a story that unfortunately is commonplace because the system is in place everywhere around the, around the country. So uh, I hope you enjoy. And remember, go to phosphatemovie.com. There are resources there to help the people of Florida. There are resources there to help you with water testing. If you want to know what's happening in your neighborhood, go there. If you want to know more, go to Mosaic on Facebook. You can learn how you can help stop Mosaic. You can go to fightforzero.org, learn more about water testing. Um, for example, do you need a preliminary or a certified water test? It'll depend on your needs. So go there, check it out, ewg.org. They have an amazing map. Um, Stell's fightforzero.org has an amazing map of Florida and all the cancer clusters. And there are ways now that we can all educate each other because you know, the press is not going to do it. Mosaic's not going to do it. Their commercials would make you think that they're the best stewards of the land. Um, but the reality of what we saw down there is the opposite of that. And it's our responsibility to change it. So thank you for joining today. We're going to be doing lots and lots more updates, lots of lives. If you live in a community where you're worried about your water, write to us at phosphatemovie at gmail.com. Uh, we want to hear your story. We want to know what's happening. We want to make sure that everybody is represented under this umbrella of the need for clean water and that we can demand legislative change, legal change, and stop these things from continuing, stop the cancer of the body politic, which will prevent millions of other cancers. So thanks again for joining. I appreciate everybody and uh, I will talk to you soon.